Okay, um, I just want to comment on Professor Jerome Lewis's talk called How Language Evolved from Music. And he gave the talk uh, nine years ago based on his living with the Biake, Biaka people, commonly called the Pygmies. And it's his best talk that um, I've heard him give. He, he has he has probably at least uh, half a dozen different talks, different lectures. And um, one of the points he emphasizes is how the Biaka people, they purposely go against entrainment and he calls this the deep, the deep structure of music as uh, a polyphony that is um, egalitarian, meaning that anybody can start the song and anybody can end end the song, but if you end it, you have to. You have to start the uh, the uh, next song, or else you're called a song thief. And it the singing can go for up to like fourteen hours nonstop. And he also discusses how this is tied to the um, the spiritual training. And he played music to his group of people that was from another tribe on the other side of Central Africa and they genetically they had been separated for 12,000 years and immediately they recognized the music as their own music and this corroborates what um, Elizabeth Marshall Thomas pointed out, uh, how another musicologist um, played the Elon Bull song of the uh, San Bushman, the original human culture, uh, from uh, two different groups that it had been separated for 30,000 years and they had the precisely same song. And um, Professor Jerome Lewis, he discusses this um, connection to the San Bushmen also with the Biaka peoples. And this key point of going against entrainment and yet being polyphonic harmony is, is another way of stating non-commutativity. Um, in other words, the, what's considered the oldest uh, rhythm in Africa is the two against three rhythm. And I, I did a short video on it before using my hands on my chest and this basic um, syncopation um, when sp sped up becomes the two-thirds frequency or three-halves frequency and this is the the, as non-commutativity, it is et eternally uh, 
ever new and changing all the time. And yet it is a very simple egalitarian um, process of of reality and and he explains how the the women use um, the same technique that birds do that's called um, um, what's the word when the uh, um, mo mocking moody no um, it's a, a group of smaller birds will um, chase after the larger bird by making calls and the idea the, what the women do is they they switch from their uh, false settle, um, he calls it a uh, head singing versus the, as yodeling, um, versus the throat singing. And so basically you have this same overtone and undertone at the same time. And the idea is to, is what it's called um, Darwinian deception because normally with animals the vocal signals are are considered a honest signal that's trusted because it's based on just your emotions and so here they're taking one step removed from the emotions to use Darwinian deception to trick trick the predators to think that there's more women than there actually are so they can um, scare off the predators by using this um, Darwinian deception in sound and then when they come back to camp that they uh, re reiterate their experience using mimicry so they do the same Darwinian deception of um, the overtone and undertone combined together as the yodeling head singing with the um, octave lower uh, th chest singing or what would be like the throat throat undertone that you'll hear like the Tibetan monks doing this with and this is the same principle again of the going against entrainment because they're not they're consciously um, using the complementary opposites of what would normally be um, um, what's the term for it the, well at any rate the, this is so we can see how this is the basis for how language developed because you need to have that um, step removed where it's not just a uh, imitation as mimicry but it's a rather this Darwinian deception and um, uh, Professor Chris Knight and Professor Jerome Lewis are working on a book about this um, where they they expand upon the musical origins to include um, gestures um, and at any rate, um, Professor Jerome Lewis, he really emphasizes how the music, it's literally like living in a musical. Like he said, you can't, like if you watch a U.S. American movie musical, it's hard to believe that that could be actual you know, real life, but 
that's literally what it's like when he's with the Bianca. That's how they live. So they're constantly breaking out into song and that the the crucial part also is the women use the singing to get a get a point across without being boring because when you use music you can use repetition without being boring whereas when you're talking it, the repetition is considered boring but in music the repetition is not considered boring because of this especially with the style of music they're doing where they're going against the entrainment and um, they're basically doing like a free jazz uh, improv like a, but it's polyphonic you know so it's basic like a modal um, pentatonic uh, scale and um, so, uh, he gave a talk recently that I cited with, um, you know, Professor Megan Beasley saying she's sure that the Son Bushman would recognize the, the Bianca music as also their own music, even though they've been separated for 70,000 years between the um, Pygmy Biaka people and the San Bushman people. And he, in this talk, um, Language Evolved from Music, he, he goes into more on the, the male, the the uh, spiritual training a bit uh, where they're required to have the men, the men are required to have three days away from the females and this is the same in the San Bushmen whenever they go hunting the males are required to be three days away from their female partners you know and the older males, if you read um, Professor Jerome Lewis's work, he's like, the older males, they don't um, sleep with the females anymore because they need to s store up their magical power. The ikile, ikile is what it's called. And he says that the, that same word, ikile, Ikile is found throughout all the uh, different Central African pygmy tribes, the Biaka peoples, whether it's Baka or Aka or Twa or Menjele, I don't know how to pronounce them all, but um, so that's another example of how it's not just the, like it's the music combined together with the spiritual training. But he says with the, the forest people, they, they just rely on the singing, singing and dancing. And that, and it's basically also like the same kind of um, impersonal eroticism that you find in the San Bushmen with their singing and the dancing, with the males dancing and the females singing, and that there's this like healing, um, erotic energy, impersonal. Um, um, and, and, it's like uh, Professor Jerome Lewis, he just, he cannot emphasize enough how music is the key, this deep structure of music of going against entrainment is the key secret to this egalitarian cooperative uh, culture.
that's that that the actual practice of the music with the dancing is how they they use that they learn it they learn that value system of the culture due to the deep structure of the music and then that's translated into how they hunt or just cooperate for their working they learn to cooperate in their communal working like who's going to hunt or gather for what just because they learn from their music that they they have to go against the entrainment and do something that is different and yet but it yet it adds to the whole as a resonance and um, melodic um, happy happy sound you know with the polyphony these basic um, intervals that the perfect fifth and the perfect fourth and the, the octave as a pentatonic scale so this this culture with the music as the focus of this culture goes back to over 70,000 years ago this is what um, Professor Jerome Lewis is arguing based on his experiences and also building on um, Dr. Victor Grauer's research along with the musicologists and other musicologists and so it's very exciting because it corroborates my own experiences in my own research in music and training and even uh, Professor Jerome Lewis he says that well you know maybe if you had if you did this serious training in music then you might know you know you might understand what he's talking about and not just in music but also in the um the spiritual uh, healing aspects and how it's interactive and egalitarian and it's not just he says it's not just like nasal gazing gazing where one person considers himself better than everybody else but it's actually this constant interactive um cooperative um like transfer of energy you know for healing the the group as a whole and the the women they rely on shaming the men and that the it's 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 well accepted that the healing energy originates from the women um that from the ikile the ikile energy the spirit and that originally the the women did not need the men but because the men provided meat and honey through hunting then they convinced the women to then um to reproduce through the men you know <laughs> instead of just the ikile directly like parthenogenesis and um, this is what um, Professor Chris Knight's whole thesis is about with uh, Professor Camilla Power about the blood relations thesis that this is found um, as the San Bushman culture spread around the world, the same um, mythology or and professor megan beasley also her book um, women like meat goes into this and it's, it's just all very fascinating i mean i don't know why more people aren't aware of this or interested in it but um so I'll just leave it at that and I oh, and then um, I'm gonna have my my music talk is gonna be premiered tomorrow 
where you know I did it in the middle of the night, so I was cranky, but I I um it's just gonna be edited out. It's something I I did it like three weeks ago and they one of the people who who um he you know as part of the channel for that he he edited it out so it, he's going to premiere it tomorrow as his, its own video so i will i will link this video about Jerome Lewis so anybody watching my video all they need to do is watch the the Jerome Lewis lecture and it corroborates everything i said so leave it at that. Thanks.